you have a novel way of saving the world, I gather. <laughs> um, this is uh, Mario Alessandro uh, Rosato. Um, the, the, um, this is bioremediation. Yes. Um, a, a way of uh, taking what you delicately describe as organic waste, which I think we might talk about mainly as sewage, um, and uh, processing is a way which um, not only doesn't put greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, but actually absorbs some. Could you explain the technology to the audience? Yes, sure. Ra rather than a technology, I would say it is a technique, because the system is so simple that it may look uh, banal. Mm, the idea is basically taking the organic waste, which is either garbage, solid garbage, or the organic fraction in sewage water, and uh, ferment it under certain conditions. It's a very simple process. I can do it uh, in my home garage. Uh, under certain conditions, this uh, um, fermentation gives hydrogen instead of methane. As you all know, hydrogen is a, a, a very powerful energy vector with a high energy density. Yes, thank you. And uh, it, may, it, may, it can produce energy without emitting CO2 to the atmosphere. But we have still a problem when, when we approach this kind of solution. The garbage, once it is fermented, still contains nitrogen. And nitrogen is a pollutant, both for the water and for the atmosphere. So the solution proposed to Innocentive consists on using the sludge resulting from, from the anaerobic fermentation to grow bamboo. Bamboo is a plant which grows very fast, and its growth is uh, uh, caused exactly because it needs a lot of nitrogen in order to absorb CO2. By absorbing CO2, it uh, uh, makes cellulose, which is the component of its cellular walls, and grows very fast. So the result of all this uh, uh, technology or, or this technique is that with a um, few hectares of land, we can produce an enormous amount of uh, biomass. And this biomass can be used for producing fiber panels. So it's a way of preserving the forests against the anthropic pressure and producing cheap material for construction by cleaning at the same time the wastewater or the organic garbage of our cities. The technology, as you see, is very simple. You don't need to have a high, high technology, uh, big infrastructures. Actually, I envisage this solution rather for small towns than for big cities. So it's a way of creating a, a kind of uh, distributed infrastructure. Uh, I won't uh, annoy too, you too much with technical details, but uh, when we make the carbon flows in this system, you can observe that, uh, can I stand Please. up? Yes. Uh, yeah. when, you, when, when we enter 20 tons of garbage into this advanced way of the digester, we get a certain amount of uh, um, sludge, which is 15 ton in carbon terms, which is absorbed by, by the uh, bamboo. So we need one hectare planted with bamboo in order to uh, um, metabolize 20 tons of garbage. But this sludge is being converted into CO2 by the bacteria in, in, this, in, in this land. So the actual gain here re is in, in the CO2, which is being absorbed by the plants in order to grow, with the final result that they are metabolizing at the same time the nitrogen. So the final result is timber-like panels, be it MDF or uh, um, similar to, to, um, to, to timber, it's uh, uh, how you call it in English, is uh, la laminated, laminated wood. Hmm. This thing, when translated in, into economical flow, is, is also quite interesting. Every project in this moment 
aiming to uh, um, giving value to, to waste is always pointing to energy production. But you see in this flow that the energy produced is only $337 per every 20 tons of garbage. But on the other side, when we transform this garbage into bamboo biomass, and this bamboo into timber-like product, products, we are obtaining a total gain of about $17,000 uh, uh, for, for the panel sold to the market. With the final result, all the, the balance of the system gives a, a, a yield of about $14,000 per hectare planted with bamboo. So I made you an example of a small town. Suppose a small town with 10,000 people. And multiply this for all the small towns you have in the United States with less than, than 10,000 people. We can potentially produce or almost three quarters of billion dollars per every 10,000 people by producing bamboo, bamboo panels. And the most important thing, each hectare of bamboo saves 20 hectares of forest because it can substitute perfectly the, the, the hardwood of the tropical forest with this high growing uh, uh, plant. Now, the paradox I want to uh, uh, bring to you, which uh, you are the, 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 the market and, and the, uh, economical expert, I am a, a technical guy. Uh, the paradox in this system is, if we try to save the world by using this system, we are going to collide with the law of the offer and the demand. Because even an, an earth like me understand that when we uh, uh, bring this to a high scale, automatically the price of the bamboo panels will begin to sink. So the paradox is the following. What should we do if we try to save the planet and, and diffuse it massively? It will not be economical anymore. Is it more important respecting the law of demand and the offer or saving the planet? Uh, the answer is to you. I, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> I, I am just stopping at the technical solution. Okay? So, <laughs> thank you. So, um, a, a couple of questions uh, come to mind about that. Um, I'll take, take that point second. Um, one of the things that um, I've been writing about recently is a, th a thing called the biochar project where you take um, carbon in the form of wood or mm -hmm. bamboo or mm -hmm. whatever and you char, you turn it into charcoal and then you bury it. Um, and this is a way of, of permanently taking or m almost permanently taking the carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, and uh, there's some evidence that for certain sorts of soil it actually improves the soil and makes it better for agriculture. Is that a route that one could uh, go down? Uh, it is technically possible but it is no longer economical. If you take the, the biomass of the bamboo and you bury mm. it... But at, at, at the point where you can no longer sell these panels because there are too damn many of them, um, is this a way that you could um, continue to use the technology? You, you can uh, avoid producing the panels and, and just uh, uh, accumulating the, the bamboo biomass. Yes. The, the, this is technically feasible. The problem is, is the, the economicity of the system. Mm. Right. Because the challenge was how to make a system that absorbs CO2 and right. is at the same time profitable. feasible, yes, profitable. Yes, yes. Actually, I can tell you one thing. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to envisage the solution, hmm. three and a half hours to draft the figures, two days to, to make the, the, the calculations, but it took me more than one week finding out how to make the economical balance mm -hmm. because nobody was willing to, to give me the price of the bamboo or the cost of production and, and that kind of things. So the problem here is not technological. The problem is market sure. and, 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 and political. Nobody pays you for absorbing CO2. Nobody pays you for reducing the load of mm -hmm. garbage on the city. 
I can do this uh, uh, in my home garage, as I said, but my, well, my, actually, my, my there are, town there are, hall... There are, there are dumping tariffs for garbage, so you, you would gain something from, from uh, not I, having to pay to dump I, the garbage. I, 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 act I actually don't save anything. My, my city town does not make me a discount for, for putting uh, less garbage to the, to they, the But system. they would in this country, I think. Yeah, ah, okay, maybe... <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I have to move to the right. United States. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, in, in the old Europe, uh, no state is willing to make a discount on, on tax to you right. for doing some solutions. The other, so, quest the other question, yeah, you know, this is perhaps a slightly geeky question, but it, when you were making the presentation, it crossed, crossed my mind. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, fermentation mechanisms for, for taking sewage and um, extracting methane from it, burning and using the methane as fuel. Um, now, methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. You don't want to yes. vent it into the atmosphere. Yes. But, but these things don't vent the, vent the methane. Of course. Why, why have you gone down the hydrogen route? I mean, hi hydrogen is a perfectly good fuel, but our fuel systems are largely set up to burn methane rather than the hydrogen. Uh, and you'd still end up with a, a, a nitrogenous fertilizer at the end. Actually, uh, um a secondary solution, an alternative solution, is to digest the garbage twice. Mm -hmm. So under certain conditions, you get hydrogen. Right. So you take the waste and, and you re-ferment it under other conditions, mm -hmm. and you get methane. Okay. And you burn both, both of them. Both, both, right. So you get more energy. You will still get some carbon emitted to the atmosphere, yes. but under the shape of CO2. Yes. And uh, CO2 is 29 times less harmful that methane coming from the, from the uh, uh, rotting biomass mm. in the fields. But if you're capturing the methane and using it as fuel, it's never going to get into the atmosphere. And th this system, mm. all, all of the input carbon ends up in the atmosphere, doesn't it? It's that you're absorbing carbon yes. from the atmosphere via the bamboo. Yes, yes, practically you are creating a, an atmosphere saturated with carbon yes. around the bamboo yes. because the yes. microbes are, are yes. eating the, just, the, the I just, biomass. I just, I just wondered why the hydrogen was a better route than the methane. It, it didn't uh, the, seem, hi the hydrogen it, I mean, has... There's nothing wrong with the hydrogen route. It no, it's, it's good, it's good. The hydrogen has higher uh, BTU value. Right. Okay, right. And, and has, uh, uh, and has no, no uh, greenhouse emissions because when you burn it, you get... Uh, uh, yeah, water but vapor. The, the carbon's going in from another route. It's, yeah, it's the, the carbon is going, in this system, the carbon is going to in the, uh, in the sludge to the, to yeah, the field. Where it's fermented, where, where it, it is, ends up in the atmosphere. It is not more fermented, it is uh, breathed okay. by the bacteria, yeah. so yeah. you get CO2. Yes, so you, uh, you the, are still the, losing the most it. Pro the most uh, uh, important problem with uh, fermenting biomass in our present uh, uh, compost and, and, and uh, uh, garbage treating facilities is that in the biomass you have not only carbon, you only have nitrogen. And the bacteria convert the nitrogen in, into nitrogen oxide. And nitrogen oxide is 290 times more harmful than CO2 from the greenhouse uh, point of view. So it is of utmost importance to use the nitrogen in order to boost the, the photosynthesis of the plants, in this case bamboo, in order to absorb carbon. So how much, um, if you really rolled this technology out, how, how much of, um, how big a wedge would it be in the greenhouse, the, the greenhouse gas problem? How much could you deal with? Uh, I will show you a, a rough uh, calculation here. When you see the, the Roughly, the distribution of greenhouse uh, emissions in, in the world comes 30% or 33% from transport, right. energy, industry, and residential for, for heating or, or, or uh, air conditioning. And the most important thing for uh, a half Argentine guy like me is the agriculture and farming. Mm. I am very fond of eating steak. And when you eat a steak, in order to produce one kilo of steak, tons of CO2 have been emitted in order to grow that, that cow. So uh, multiply that for all the cows and pigs and, and, and goats and, and uh, animal and chicken you have in the world. So you, we'd actually start off in farms rather than cities. You can, the, the important thing here is that you can use what today is a problem to solve the problem because all the dung contained 
in, in the cow's uh, uh, dung would be turned into methane or, or greenhouse gases. But if you use the nitrogen contained in, in that dung, you can actually absorb more CO2 by using that nitrogen as fertilizer that got actually is emitted to the atmosphere when this biomass is decomposed. So the balance is positive in our favor. The only thing we must do is change the mentality. We need to, to, to uh, um, make things simpler to the farmers in order to adopt this kind of decentralized you, system. You, you, you mentioned a, a figure, I can't remember what it was, of, of um, revenue per hectare. How does that compare with growing crops? Well, uh, just to give you an idea, if you um, plant maize, which is a, a reasonably gr fast growing crop, you need to put 300 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. In Europe, we have a big um, problem with that because it, there's a, a, a regulation that uh, hampers you for putting too much organic dung on, on, the, on the fields mm. because of nitrification. Yeah. And you get only 20 tons of biomass per hectare. If you plant bamboo, you need, to, you need absolutely to put at least one ton per hectare and you get 100 tons of biomass. Mm -hmm. And this is a biomass which is not readily converted in, into CO2 as what happens when you eat the maize. It is uh, blocked, it is fixed in, in, in timber-like products. But I was, I, was, I was asking here, from the farmer's point of view, he has to give up. Um, a hectare of his land to grow this bamboo, uh, which he could grow something else on. What, what's the revenue, how does the revenue for bamboo compare with the revenue for maize? Uh, I don't know in the United States, here in, 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 in my, my country, in Europe, one uh, farmer planting maize is getting about uh, two or three thousand euros per hectare, yeah. and with bamboo, after my calculations, uh, uh, it's fourteen thousand dollars per hectare. That sounds like a good but, um, a but good, a good it, deal. It, it depends. It depends on the ability of the farmer to transform sure, that, that uh, bamboo in, into something marketable, mm. and it depends on the offer and demand. Bamboo panels are more or less expensive now because they are not so so abundant. If you begin to produce it massively, the, pre, the price Inevitable, will sink. Yeah. And this is the paradox of our society. If you try to save the world, um, it's not any more a, a good business. <laughs> A good note to end on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.